Uh, a guy named uh, Aussie Technology on uh, YouTube asked about this, so I thought I'd make a, a fresh uh, video about it. So I've got an Arduino Uno you know, with um, some uh, resistors, three resistors, go into a phono connector. I've got this uh, monitor. And you see if I plug in the uh, if I plug it in <laughs> need five hands for this job. Right and you can see it's producing a, a video display. So we've got um you have to freeze frame that if you want to read it. Um, We've got an Arduino outputting a composite video signal, and you can use any uh, any screen. This is just a little one that's they're sold as like uh, car reversing camera things. So uh, I've done a little schematic here. So it it uses um, the serial port pin one to clock the pixels out and and you're stuck with that really it's to get them fast enough you need uh, some sort of hardware shift register and on the you know that's the best thing going it's it's the fastest then you need um, some sync pulses which are relatively easy to generate um, so that's just done with a timer and then I've got this third signal, um, which I've called suppress. Uh, or you could put the sync pulses on any pin you wanted, really, but I've got them on pin 9 at the moment. And then I've got this third signal called suppress, which is because of uh, when you're switching the uh, serial port on and off uh, at the end of each uh, raster, it tends to output a... Uh, it goes high and, and sends out a pixel you don't want. So I've written the code to use that suppress line to basically switch off the video signal uh, when, when you get in the glitches from the, um, from the serial port. So uh, here's, the, here's the code. Um, now to get... Um, to get the timing accurately enough to uh, to to pipe the characters out to the uh, serial port at the, just the right moment, it needs an assembler routine. So I wrote this uh, an assembler. You can a lot of people don't realise that you can use assembler on the Arduino IDE, but you can. It's it's all built in. You just write a, a file with an S at the uh, at the end, so I've got this one called output characters dot s, and and that's it. You just stick that in the same folder uh, with your um, with your normal sketch files, um, and of course you've got to know how to write assembler. <laughs> and then in your main uh, routine, which is just in normal Arduino language, you put you put a line like this. Look for. So I've got one uh, uh, assembler routine, which I've called output chars, and you, you put extern C and the name of it and the values that you want to pass to it. So I've written the, the Arduino, so the assembler routine sends out um, a row of characters, basically, uh, and then the the normal Arduino code is fast enough to um, you know sort of drive the rows and things so you don't have to do the whole thing in assembler. Um, I've, I've put a bit of code at the bottom the loop you see basically the loop isn't doing anything other than working a counter so I'll put this uh, thing down in the bottom corner of the screen which is just counting so that's that's the number of loops. It goes up by one every loop. And all the loop is doing at the moment is, is displaying the number. But it's still managing what uh, 
a thousand loops a second, even though it's uh, spending much of its time, the processor, uh, in this um, assembler routine driving out each raster. But you've got a you've got a bit of uh, a bit of time at the end of each raster when the processor can do something. And then you've got quite a lot of time during the flyback after each frame. So it's sending, um, I can't remember whether I've got this as 50 or 60 frames a second at the moment. You can do either just by playing with the timers. So you get quite a lot of time after each frame during the flyback when the, when the processor can still be busy doing other stuff. Uh, and you get a little bit of time at the end of each individual raster. Anyway, you can see it's it's rock solid. The, the trick is, um, the real trick to getting it solid is here in the uh, assembler routine where the interrupt, because the normal code running on the Arduino the instructions can take one, two or three clock cycles. When you come into an interrupt, you can have up to three cycles of jitter, which is, okay, that's only three sixteen millionths of a second, but it's enough to make the display fuzzy. So, um, if the way it works is it, um, it uses the CPU T count cycle and then depending on whether that's um, depending on how many um, cycles it's it's out it it, uh, it basically does um, this jitter fix thing so it, it's uh, it increments um, this R18 and branches if low increments it again and so on. So it, it's it, by doing some some clever branches, you can synchronise the processor up accurate to one clock cycle before you go into the main part of the routine, which then uh, looks up the character in in its uh, that it's got a display, gets the gets the uh, font from memory, clocks out the pixels. Uh, and you can see it's all very tight timing. So is it useful? Well, I don't know. Maybe on an Arduino, you know, it's not that useful because you've, you're, you're clocking, you're spending a lot of the time, um, a lot of the processor's time just clocking out pixels. Uh, you've tied up the transmit part of the serial port, so you can't use that. So if you want to use any serial you've got to do software serial um, you can still receive but it's going at some uh, quirky board rate I've forgotten what it is but uh, can I work that out it's been a couple of years since I did this if you set the board rate just right you could still uh, receive because the receive part of the uh, things not doing anything, although uh, even that might be a bit dodgy. You're probably better to use software serial. So you'd have to use software serial and you, you're tying up a lot of the processor time. But it's interesting if you, if you want to hack some video. And it's much more useful on an Arduino uh, Mega because it's got more than one serial port and it's got a lot more RAM to play with so you can do graphics as well. Maybe I'll do that in a future video. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll put the code in, uh, in, in the description where you can download it if you want to have a play.